Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm Bob DeMarco. Coming up, MKM announces their new collaboration-rich lineup for 2022. Uh, in the state of the collection, I have four really cool knives loaned to me from uh, listener Hero Sticks. Thank you, Hero. And uh, then we take a look at my most intimidating folders. Now, I, I will disinclude from that list this knife. This is my most intimidating folder. This is the XL Espada Cold Steel, and it's obviously the most intimidating because it is a full seven and a half inches long. So this is low-hanging fruit, and I am not going to be uh, listing this with my most intimidating folders. We're going to be looking at overall shape and emotional mm, content per shape. So uh, we'll get to all of that important stuff and more after all of this. Okay, so first, the pocket check of the week. So I've been carrying uh, two of my stalwarts, two of my very favorites, uh, two of my go-tos, I, I must say. Uh, first, in my front right pocket, I have the Demco Knives AD20. Oh, wait. This, this was not a setup. Oh, gee whiz. There's tape on the blade. See, I used it. <laughs> uh, that was unintentional. Uh, ordinarily, I'm very uh, fastidious about the blade. I cut, I cut tape and... Uh, I immediately get the alcohol pad and wipe it off. I don't like uh, I don't like leaving residue on the blades. But this is uh, this is what I've been carrying today. I just I feel utterly confident with the AD20 in hand. And you know what? I could not stop driving my wife crazy with this because I could not stop fidgeting with it, opening it, closing it, opening it, closing it, not using it for much. But listen to this. I mean, you do it just as much to hear it as you do to feel it and use it. So today I had the AD20.5 uh, or, or AD20. And from my description of it, you're like, that's an expensive toy, Bob, that you've just been fidgeting with and playing with all day. Well, I, I do assure you that I used it for something. I guess I opened up a box. Oh, yeah, I did. I opened up a box full of knives loaned to me by Hero Sticks. Thank you, Hero, again. So I did use the knife, but... Um, you know, it's a little bit overkill for my lifestyle, but that is kind of the theme here. Uh, that is why uh, I call myself a junkie. All right, so here we go. Next is my uh, three o'clock in the waistband fixed blade knife of the day, and it is the most amazing and awesome JB knives, uh, JB knife and tool ditch pick. And I have put a uh, discrete carry concepts clip on it uh i had an ulti clip i gotta say i'm not a huge fan of the ulti clip i have it on a couple of my knives and i just i just i don't know it's too committal what's with all the moving parts this uh on the discrete carry concepts it's just a folded over piece of spring steel that has a excellent retention it's got that little uh, flange that goes down and holds on either to your pants or if you want to put it over your belt, it goes over your belt. Uh, but I just clip it directly onto the fabric of my pants. The rest uh, resides inside the waistband. And then that sticks up. You put a sweater over it or a jacket. And you're walking around with a very capable knife, um, you know, without freaking people out. This is a great discreet little package. And uh, let me show you the knife. Uh, just, just a beautiful knife. I love... The sin is not sinuous. I love the sort of, mm, well, super ergonomic handle. <laughs> Sorry. You know, you've got your, you've got uh, two areas for your fingers to nestle in. You've got this part for the fat of your, uh, there's a little dip here in the back of the blade for the fat of your palm. You've got a nice rounded pommel uh, that is kind to the rib cage and to the love handles if you carry it the way I carry and then you have this very um, capable and menacing three and a half inch double edged blade. And it's all at a sixteenth of an inch. I mean, it is very, very thin, uh, but very, very capable. Uh, I think this is 1095. Now I'm I'm spacing on the steel here. Uh, but I had uh, uh, Brian from JB Knife and Tool on the show and and he was talking about how 
uh, ditch, uh, the, the moniker ditch at the beginning of any of their knife means it's in this very thin blade steel. And they do a lot of testing with it and are pretty brutal with these, uh, pounding them into two by fours and, and then, and all sorts of stuff. And this remarkably thin steel, uh, holds up remarkably well. It's about as thin as your average steak knife, like cheap steak knife. And, uh, but it is springy. You can bend it. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't recommend it, but, uh, it, it does spring back and, you know, it's optimized for that Pakal grip. And when this one was offered, he was, uh, he offered double edge, single edge or bayonet grind, which was just the front portion, about a half of it sharpened, which also would be cool. But I decided why not go for, you know, full Monty here. So I did love that knife. Uh, Heaven, heaven, uh, help us if I ever need to actually pull it out and use it for anything, because uh, if I do, that either means I have forgotten my other knife, which would be, you know, terrible, or, or I actually needed to defend myself, which would off, you know, be incredibly awful. Uh, so I'm going to put this back in here in this sheath, this menacing tool, but uh, I do love it. So and uh, this right here, this uh, 80, 20. I highly, highly recommend it if you have the means. And if not, then definitely, definitely check out the 80-20.5. Uh, you're going to be hard-pressed to find someone who doesn't find that knife impressive in one way or other. Uh, and I personally dig the lock. All right, so that's what I was carrying today. What were you carrying today? You can let me know by uh, calling the listener line and leaving a message, uh, message 724-466-4487. Or more directly, you could leave a comment below and let me know. I find it interesting. I think we have a classy group of listeners and washer, uh, watchers, and we get some very interesting uh, combinations, carry combinations, and I love that. What else I love is that uh, most of you uh, are multi-knife carriers. I think um, either out of necessity or out of just pure love. You know, I've got all of these knives and I have just this day to be carrying around some of my collection and checking out and using. Why not uh, bring a couple of them a along for the ride? You know, life is short. You might want to experience some of these things you have and not have them locked away. Um, I want to talk about a very special Gentleman Junkie knife giveaway uh, that is coming up this month. <clears throat> Uh, this month being the month of February 2022, we're, we're giving away uh, to one very lucky Gentleman Junkie patron a very special knife. And it is a prototype, and it is a Mike Latham Collector Knives prototype. And I'm going to put it under the uh, knife cam here. I'm going to tell you about this. Uh, about two years ago now, or maybe a year and a half ago now, uh, Mike Latham sent me two prototypes he sent me this and he sent me the gun stock that he now sells on the collector knives website made by Fox knives. Um, two, two great knives. Uh, and <laughs> I ended up uh, keeping them both and I had them on the show not that long ago. And I showed this one back off to him. This is the one we're giving away. This is a swing guard lockback prototype made by lion steel in M390 and carbon fiber and titanium frame and a back lock. This thing is amazing. But uh, I pulled it out and I was talking about how impressive it is and when are you going to make this? And he's like, you still have that? <laughs> and I said, uh, yeah, you know, I wouldn't sell this for the world. And he's like, no, 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 no. You need to give that away. I didn't just like give you two prototypes just to have. You need to give one of those away. <laughs> and uh, so I'm I'm doing that now. It, it took me a little while. Um, but uh, that's what we're doing. We're giving this away in the Gentleman Junkie Knife Giveaway. And this is a very special and valuable knife. Uh, that's M390 blade steel. Let's see. This is a three-inch blade. You've got a, a nice nail neck. M390, as I mentioned. Very thin ground blade. It it feels... Ooh, ow, it just It's very, very sharp on the edge. Just got me a little bit. Uh, but it almost feels hollow ground. I think it's flat ground. It's thin blade stock crowned spine like the italians do uh very nice back lock the the real star of the show here is this swing guard now most swing guard knives you get a loose swing you get a loose guard 
this all of the play has been engineered out of this guard. It is so that tolerance is so tight, so right on that there is absolutely zero play with that guard. However, it's not difficult in any manner or fashion to open or close. It's not like it's so tight that right here it's like it is loose and free flowing until it's locked open and bam it is locked open this is a super cool knife uh i i've been privileged to have this uh and presumptuous to have kept it this long so i am now passing it along to a gentleman junkie uh so uh the next gentleman junkie knife giveaway uh will be on the 17th and uh, we'll be giving away this mike latham lion steel swing guard prototype this is a beauty. I'm going to be showing it off a little bit more. I'll make a special video, another video about it, announcing it. Um, I'll be sad to see it go. I mean, this is a, I, I thought it was a proud member of the DeMarco Edged uh, edged Tool Museum, but indeed it is, uh, it is meant for someone else's Edged Tool Museum. So we're going to move it along. Uh, but what a beauty and uh, what an honor to have had this around and to experience it. I don't know if this is ever going to be made in, into a production knife. So why am I giving it away? Well, because Mike Latham said, you're a greedy SOB. You got to give that away. So there you go. Uh, one other special knife before we move on to Life Knife News. I want to I want to show you uh, a wonderful viewer slash listener, Jamie. And I'm not going to use his last name because I don't have his permission, but he's been keeping me abreast of his knife making exploits. He has, uh, I guess, maybe about a year ago started making knives and he's shown me his progress. And And he sent me two knives and I'm not going to show them here today because uh, I'm going to make a special video about them. I want to talk to him about them. Uh, but he did send me a gift that he made and it's really cool. Uh, I will show you, I have it in a, speaking of collector knives, I have it in a little collector knives leather slip here. But what it is, is a little handmade straight razor. And this thing is so cool. It is so sweet. It's a very thin piece of steel. This looks like, uh, like an eighth of an inch thick. And uh, he has hollow ground uh, and, and half of it is a blade, a squarish blade, and he has hollow ground that square blade and then flat ground it. And it is wickedly, wickedly sharp and thin. And it is, you know, uh, I have shaved my arm with it. I have not tried my face. These are particularly coarse and manly hairs I have on my face. So we'll we'll have to see. I'll strap that up before I attempt. But Jamie, thank you. This thing is really cool. And he's got he's filed in a bunch of jimping in the back that just feels great in that little thumb swale um so this drops in here i put i uh, fashioned a little uh, uh paper and gaffers tape guard on the inside there so when it slips in there it's not going to cut the seams of that leather and i can just drop this in my pocket this might be i am not a one to have a dedicated unboxing knife but I know that a lot of my uh, uh, YouTube peers have this sort of setup uh, where they have a handmade uh, edged tool like this to open, to unbox knives. So maybe this will be my unboxing knife uh, from time to time. Thank you, Jamie. I really appreciate this gift and uh, I will cherish it and use it because it is very usable and damn sharp. I appreciate that. Uh, so if you want to get in on this this knife giveaway, this very exclusive prototype knife giveaway, this, this lion steel Latham prototype, become a patron. Uh, all you got to do is go to the knife junkie.com slash Patreon, and you can select from uh, various uh, levels of support you'd like to uh, be involved with. The uh, high level of support, the gentleman junkie uh, gets entered monthly in uh, to win a knife uh, in this month. It is this awesome prototype. So go check it out. Uh, just go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon, or you can scan that QR code. Again, that's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. 
The GetUpside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. GetUpside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. MKM makers of <laughs> Maniago knife makers. So these are this is a a sim not a symposium. What do you call it? A collective of uh Maniago Italy knife makers. That Maniago is the capital of knife making in Italy. I was just showing off this lion steel. They are located there. Um it is the epicenter of Italian knife making and uh MKM that this is a a collaborative group of those folks have come up uh, with their collaborative rich lineup for the year. And there's some pretty cool things and some very impressive uh, collaborators here. Uh, that's weird. Collaborators. To say collaborator, it sounds so. Are you a collaborator? Uh, okay. So anyway, the first knife here, this is a really cool work knife, uh, Tommaso Rumici. We've seen a lot of Tommaso Rumici's in the past couple of years this one i love the shape of that handle that's a 3.6 inch blade uh or a 3.4 inch blade i'm sorry that's m390 uh mkm uses a lot of m390 they are not in the uh n690 game so much as as the uh more uh pedestrian italian um, and european productions m390 here you get micarta a lockback. It, it, it's a classic looking work knife, but that handle to me looks especially uh, lovely and sumptuous. Uh, next down, uh, we move down and we have here a uh, Jesper Voxnez. Uh, this is a, a sub three inch 2.6 drop uh, drop point. It looks cool. Not not exactly my my bag, but I love uh, Voxnez and I, I respect him and everything he's designed that I've ever held or used has been outstanding. So I have no doubt for the Vox fans, this will be a good one. But from Vox, moving down is one that's very exciting to me. Uh, this is the macro, and the macro is the upscaled version of the micro. You remember, you may remember the micro that came out from MKM last year, I believe. Uh, there was one in this shape that we see here, this uh, this Warren Cliffy shape, and then there was a drop point, very small. Um, very small, pocketable fixed blade knives. This is the macro. This is the upscaled version, but still it's only 2.6 inches in length. I love the overall uh, profile of this knife. I think it would make a really cool four and a half or five inch bladed knife uh, looking at this. Um, but I also love a small, you know, neck knife. And this would this would be outstanding for that. I love the look of that. Uh, Vox is a classy dude. Okay, so we, we scroll down to the Maximo. Bob Terzuola. Bob Terzuola has been doing a lot of uh, production, um, what do you call it? Production collaborations over the past couple of years. And uh, I had him on the show uh, years ago before we were um, video. And anyway, I was talking to him and his wife said, uh, he told me that his wife told him, Bob, you got to get some of that mailbox money. And I think that's what this is, mailbox money. It's, you know, he's, he's uh, licensing out some of his incredible designs to some of these incredible production makers like this and drop and some other places. And they're, and they're producing his knives, uh, you know, so that the hoi polloi such as myself and perhaps yourself can afford his designs. Otherwise, if we wanted to get a custom Terzuola, uh, we'd have to, you know, get a second loan on the house or what, what have you. So this is a great service by Bob Terzuola and also by these makers such as MKM and they get their mailbox money. They get their royalty checks and everyone wins. Uh, that, of course, is going to be an M390. And I love that frag pattern. Next up is a gorgeous uh, Jens Anzo, uh, a peer of uh, Voxnez up there in Denmark or out there over there. Uh, also designs very signature style knives, knives that you look at and you pretty much know that they're Anzo. This is no exception. This is a limited run by them, and it is absolutely gorgeous. Called the the Gochia, Gochia. I'm not sure what that means, but the blade is a is a beautifully tightly patterned uh, Damascus and, uh, or Damasteel. It's called rose pattern Damasteel. But then you see how the pattern sort of continues, 
in a uh, sort of a swirling pattern carved out into a sort of faux bolster onto the handle. It's absolutely gorgeous. I, I love seeing that. This is a knife that um, I'm happy is only 3.3 inches because I don't feel compelled to buy it. If that were a four inch bladed knife or a 3.75 inch bladed knife, I would feel compelled morally to buy it it is so beautiful and i believe that we need to surround ourselves with more beauty i believe like like many i haven't I'm not the uh you know creator of this idea but there's a lot of ugly design on purpose these days uh, like since the 60s like architecture drive around there are a lot of ugly buildings there's a lot of just ugliness and something like this this anzo knife is so beautiful not only in its profile but in its uh, execution on the surfaces this is just the kind of knife I would like to have around just to have because it's something beautiful. All right. And last up, uh, we move down and we have a Michael Zeba um, collaboration. This is a, 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 a <laughs> it's called the flame light. We have seen this design, this flame design. It's a very, very neutral design, long, slender. Uh, well, it's not that long, but a slender uh, drop point blade, spear point, I would say. Um, even though the, the grind doesn't reflect that. And then a very neutral micarta handle. To me, I, I very much like Michael Zeba. He he he's out of Brooklyn or he's out of like Greenpoint, I think, or uh Queens or Brooklyn. I can't remember where he's out of, but he um makes incredibly beautiful kitchen knives. That's I think how he pretty much cut his teeth. Uh, but also incredible folders. Most of his folders are very recognizable. They have recurves, they have swedges and and very um, ergonomic handles. This looks like uh, an outsider designed by Michael Zeba to me. I know it's been around a long time, but this is not what I like him for. Uh, I like him for his more organic designs um, and his kitchen knives, but massive respect for Michael Zeba. Um, I'd like to get him on the show sometime and, and talk to him. Uh, he, he, I, I'm pretty sure he lives in the neighborhood adjacent to the neighborhood I used to live in. Uh, which would make sense because he's Polish and Greenpoint is Polish neighborhood. Okay, we are going to move on. This looks cool. MKM. Um, I do not have any MKM knives. I do have some Italian produced knives, and I uh, they they do have a special they have a special uh, a characteristic uh, special quality all their own. Just like you look at the designs of the Polish, or you look at the designs of the South Africans, or you look at the designs of the Russians, and you can just tell when you're looking at a knife from, from those cultures. And uh, MKM and Italian-made knives have some of those um, characteristics that that are very identifiable and uh, that make my heart swell with pride. Okay, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at the state of the collection uh, in which I'm going to show off four really outstanding cool knives that are on loan to me from our good buddy Hero Six uh, Sticks. And then we will move on to my most intimidating folders. Very, very important stuff coming up here on the Knife Junkie podcast. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. A knife that I talk about as being one of my absolute favorite acquisitions of 2021. I got it at Blade Show. That is my Vero Engineering Synapse. I do not have with me. It is actually out on loan currently. But on loan to me uh, from Hero Sticks is this. This is what I want. A Synapse XL. So this is the Synapse. An outstanding design and uh, incredible execution in the XL format, which is a nearly four inch blade, if not four inches, if not four inches on the nose. Let's see, one, two, three. Yeah, it is It is just about exactly four inches, um, I think. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, but I, I love this knife. I love my Synapse. I think it's, it's such a perfect design and the execution is so excellent. And, and this is that in my size wheelhouse. I don't know. I think I might have to go through whatever machinations it will take to get one of these now, because of course I missed the drop when these came out and, um, you know, much to my regret. So I think I have to get one of these. This is M390. One of the things I love the most about the Synapse is, uh, you know, besides everything is that incredible flipper. It's a tiny little flipper tab, uh, not even a tab. It's just a pro protrusion of the tang that is jimped 
much like the early mods of the Quaken by Boker, where people would take the um would, would just carve out some of the bolster here and show the tang and put a little jimp there and then boom all of a sudden you have a flipper uh, i love it because it's low profile it does not uh, in any way come out from it's not it's not a dorsal fin on a shark here it's just kind of very low profile but it works outstanding i mean you just pull it back and with ease that thing flips out uh no problem i love the bolsters this two finger swale here uh, I usually poo poo, uh, but in the case of the small one, I like it because it fits two fingers uh, there and then I get my forefinger up on the bolster and it's perfect for use on this big one. It really feels comfortable with uh, my my front two fingers. It's hit or miss with a two finger uh, choil to me. In this case, it works very well, both in the XL version and in the regular version. I have not experienced the small. There's a mini version of this, too, which is sub three inches. Uh, smooth, super smooth action. These are made by Best Tech, who, who I think is, I think they give, I got to be honest, I think they give Riot a run for their money in terms of OEM work. I mean, this thing, if you told me it was Riot, I'd believe you all day long. Uh, it, it has just super high quality. It the build, I mean, it just feels stout and sturdy, rough and ready, <laughs> and great execution of not a simple design. This being a bolster lock, something with the XL that uh, he took care of that I'm very pleased with. Uh, the ramp on the clip is uh, of some of his earlier clips has been criticized for coming up too steeply and too high. Well, he he kept the length but knocked that down and that is perfect that's exactly exactly what the doctor ordered because you don't feel it at all in your palm and that was the that was the complaint that when you squeeze down on the synapse clip and maybe some of the others you felt this jabbing up into your palm now with this uh the very tip of the clip ramp uh angle downward you don't feel it but you don't it doesn't lose any purchase on the pocket when you're sliding it in uh, I love this red G10. I think it's very cool. You know, actually, to be 100% honest, I wouldn't have ordered it like this if this were mine. But seeing it in person and having it in hand, I love it. It really, it's stunning. It's almost like a tomato red. Oh, and Vero, he's a he's a Paisan, no doubt. This is more like a tomato red than your average EDC red. I don't know what else to call it. So, I mean, to me, this looks like sauce. Sauce all day long. I love this knife. I really love this knife. And I'm going to have to someday send it back to Hero. Someday. Someday in the near future. At least this year. Okay, next up. I'm kidding, of course. This is coming to you soon. as soon as I make a video. This one I've been avoiding because it looks like something I really, really like. But it's got one thing that I don't. So that's always a good excuse not to spend the money. And the the thing I don't like on this in pictures, I don't mind in person. So now I'm in trouble. And uh, what I'm talking about is the Something Obscene Company J Cape, three and a half inch. Uh, I love this knife. I love this knife. And having it in hand, you know, I've always liked the way it looks, and have respected the people who have really given it strong excellent reviews and i love something obscene companies uh collaboration knife with arcane designs the antimatter that's the dagger i love that thing and i always respected this design but then i got it in hand and holy mackerel I, let's before we even talk about the blade let's talk about this handle this is probably the most comfortable handle of any new knife i've held and new not this is not a new design but new to me and i i took it in hand and wasn't expecting it because i opened it up and i was like oh this blade so gorgeous it's so thinly ground hollow here and 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 flat here and that gorgeous swedge and then i gripped it and not only is this thumb ramp perfect perfectly jimped with the with the perfect amount of gription there and uh and, the, and great placement but this, this area here, oh my gosh, it feels so good on the hand. I'm talking about the pectoral, <laughs> the, the bottom region of the handle. 
uh, it has a finger choil for your first finger, and then it plateaus for your next two fingers, and then it has a soft uh, upward, uh, or it just has another swale there. It just feels so comfortable. It's the step. It's the stepping motion. If I turn it upside down, it steps up and then peaks and then drops back down, and it is perfectly ergonomic. Sorry for that uh, <laughs> that description. Just just take it from me. It feels great in hand. Uh, a couple other things about this knife design that are very well considered uh, that I that I like a lot. The lock bar access. If you look at it on paper, it does not look good. It does not look good. Like you, it, there's no a little extra cutout on the show side to give you extra access. But the way it's jimped here. The way the lock bar is jimped, it just grabs your finger per, or your thumb perfectly. So you don't need to like jam your thumb in there. Oftentimes, if you don't have a little extra carved away on the show side to give you access to that lock bar, you have to uncomfortably jam your thumb in there and, and try and get purchased. This just works perfectly. It's jimped from the very tail end of the choil up to the very front. And anywhere you grab, it grabs nicely. The, de uh, the detent is perfectly tuned. Uh, I think these are made by Riot. I'm unsure about that. Uh, I'll do research before I do my close-up video. But they really get this um, pocket clip right. See see the way it's canted backward and jimped? Uh, Fire and Forge does that too. This is the most comfortable way to make a flipper. And not for nothing, it flips out gorgeously. Now, by comparison... I love hinderer knives, but they kind of do it the opposite, where you have this sharp point going into your th into your finger, and you draw it back, and you get nice flipping action, but it's not comfortable at all. This backward, uh, backward facing um, flipper in the closed position works so well. And then, not for nothing, again, uh, and this is personal aesthetically, I think it looks cool. Uh, with that with that little finger guard flipper canted forward. It's an aggressive posturing of it in the open position. I think it looks cool. And looking cool is a big part of it. Uh, let's see. This is not a finger choil. It's a very generous sharpening choil. And I'm just fine with that. Um, this, to me, is a fighting... Or it's a, it's, it's a very tactical utility knife, I guess, is what you would call it. But to me, it's... It's kind of a very combative design. Uh, that that lightning bolt clip is the thing I didn't like, and uh, it's not bad at all. You don't feel it. It doesn't. It might just draw a little bit of attention, but this knife is so cool. I want it badly. I'm just gonna say it. I want it badly. If anyone has one to offer, let me know. I really would like to have a J Cape in my life, 3.5 inch, and then you get the cool fist. On both sides, I do not mind that. It's attitude. I love that. The nothing, the something obscene company logo is a fist coming at your face with uh, that lightning bolt on the middle finger. So very cool. <clears throat> All right, next up in the um, in the hero sticks loner pile, and this is not everything. I'm just showing four. He sent me six. Uh, two of them I've I've shown on this, or one of them I've shown here, and one of them I'm going to do a little breakout of. Okay, next up is a very cool one. This is the Summit Knives Fox Made El Capitan. So Summit Knives is a company that started producing knives in 2019, um, and they are uh, camp or not campers, uh, rock climbers, and they started making. Uh, knives for climbers, you know, uh, optimized for people who have that kind of adventurous lifestyle who might find themselves hanging from a sheer rock face, uh, you know, at uh, 200 feet and you need to cut something while well, you got a knife to do it. And the their first ones were small, very nice looking knives, um, also Italian made, I think Fox. And then they came out with this larger one, El Capitan. And this thing is tremendous this thing is very cool it is a very broad here let's let's take some dimensions here just so we can see okay okay it's got a super broad 3.75 inch blade and from from the edge to the spine we're looking at uh 1.75 inches so almost two inches broad 
or tall is that blade. And it is fully flat ground. And uh, looking at it, it looks like it's about an eighth of an inch thick. Uh, I'm sorry, I, I don't have my calipers and, you know. Uh, but it comes down to a an incredibly, incredibly thin behind the edge, sharp shearing edge. Uh, in the hand, it feels amazing. It is thin. It's a svelte, uh, I think it's about 0.6 inches or 0.5 inches thin. So it feels standard, uh, definitely thinner than this uh, Vero Engineering Synapse. But the broadness of the handle, the broadness of the handle and the shaping of the handle, it's got a, a, a palm swell and an arched back and a nice uh, forward guard. This thing feels amazing in hand. It feels like you could work hard all day long with this knife. Uh, it is a titanium frame lock over here. So you got the the uh, lock bar interface. You've got very smooth uh, bearing, uh, not bearing, very smooth phosphor bronze washer action. I really like this knife. It was not on my radar at all. I remember we talked about it here, um, but uh, it kind of slipped. And now that I have it in hand, I, <laughs> I want this one too. This is a Tommaso Rumici design. We mentioned him in uh, in uh, Life Knife News. He's got a new MKM knife. Uh, and it's in D2. D2 because this thing in M390 would be worth whatever this is commanding because I'm sure it's a pricey knife because it's a branded knife, Summit knife made by Fox. So I'm sure this sucker is not inexpensive. You can uh, swap the clip to the other side, and I've never seen this kind of lock bar insert. It's really, really cool. All right, so that is second to last one. That is the Summit El Capitan. I have a on my computer at work, one of the screensavers is El Capitan. And uh, someday I'm going to climb that sucker. Yep. Spring break. Just going to get some ropes, head over there and climb that sucker. All right. So next up is this really, really cool and interesting Boker. It's bad guy Suville. I, I need to find out some information about this. It was very hard to find when I searched for it. Actually, I even searched the Boker website and, uh, Let's just say I need to do more research on this sucker. But this is a giant, looks like a huge fattened Lanny's clip. Uh, this is G10, layered G10. So you have uh, red G10 liners next to the uh, slip joint spring here. And then on the outside, you have this marvelously dimpled and jimped, or not dimpled, or not jimped, uh, what do you call this, rock patterned G10 with a faux bolster carved into it, black G10. And then you have this, very stylized skull uh, as the shield on this very, very fattened Lanny's clip. Uh, I'm not sure. So this is TTT, TTT, TTTT design. I'm not sure what the hell that is. Again, more research uh, before I do my close up video. But look at this action. Ah, oh, this thing. When I first opened it, I looked for the lock. I, I was sure this was a lock back. Um, from how it, how it felt and how it, how it, uh, engaged when I actually opened it, that sound, but look at how giant this thing is in hand. This is a, an intimidating slip joint. I mean, this is one hell of a slip joint, I gotta say. And, uh, I'm going to bring this up to the mic so you can hear it. Um, it's got great walk and talk, even though it doesn't have a half stop. It's got great sound. And uh, interesting thing about this modern uh, slip joint is that it's totally take up a, a, a partable. You can take the sucker apart. It looks like two T6s and a T8 on the pivot. And that also means you can adjust the pivot. And uh, just a gorgeous refined knife. This is a Boker Plus. You know, for a while, Bokers were getting, were getting, uh, had a bad reputation for a bad fit and finish and, um, and bad. Uh, QC, and I just have never experienced it. I, every Boker I've ever actually had in hand uh, has been a Boker Plus, so maybe that's something. Uh, but they've all been outstanding, like outstanding. I have a couple of them in my own collection, and then I've uh, I had uh, the Lateralis, which I sold off, and some other knives uh, by Boker. But they are really amazing knives, and this this slip joint is man, this thing is cool. I would I would love to have this knife okay how many times have i said that in the last uh during state of the collection well four times 
because uh, Hero Sticks sent me some really cool knives. So thank you, man. Uh, I, I do greatly appreciate it. And uh, I, I would like to have each and every one of these in my own personal collection. So uh, you've exposed me to a couple of expenses I didn't even know I had. Thank you. All right. So let's get to the topic at hand. Uh, intimidating folders. Now, I just mentioned that word, that description with this uh, this bad guy, Souville, uh, slip joint. But let's let's talk a little bit about what intimidation is uh, and what I mean by or what I mean by that here. So, again, at the outset, I mentioned I am not going to mention this folder. Now, I have a bunch of intimidating folders from Cold Steel and they're intimidating because of their size. Look at this big, beautiful seven and a half inch. Uh, that's an Espada folder. It is based on the um, on the Navaja. It is intimidating due to its sheer size and shininess, right? But I'm going to talk here about blade shape. This is mostly blade shape. You see this blade come out, and I'm not talking about this one in particular, but you see that the blade come out and it is terrifying uh, because of what its uh, shape is capable of doing. So let's start with, we were talking about Fox a lot today. So I'm going to start with this Fox Knives 599 Karambit. Karambits in general are pretty menacing. Uh, they are pretty intimidating because you have that sickle-shaped forward, uh, forward pointed blade. And then you have the finger ring. It's an exotic weapon. You look at this thing, it's an exotic weapon. And if you see someone flipping it around and doing their little flippy flipping, uh, you know, karambity stuff, and you're not trained or you're not, or, you know, it's intimidating. You see that thing flipping around and you're like, this guy's either going to cut himself or he's going to cut me with it. Hopefully he cuts himself. And I have cut myself badly with this very knife flipping it around actually i've gotten the tip of this embedded in my wrist which was a <laughs> pleasant and alarming experience and i realized you know karambits are cool to flip and have fun with but only when they're trainers otherwise uh it would not be my first choice but the ring and the and the and the reverse grip and the forward facing sickle shaped blade is is intimidating and alarming especially if you've never seen one before and someone pulls that out and starts swinging it around you'll be like oh my god this is a ninja so <clears throat> 599 karambit uh and karambits in general but this one actually uh, before i put it down i have to say it is especially intimidating uh that the um emerson wave on the top here this this little area it's like an extra added pokey looking thing the flipper here which is absolutely awful because it does not flip the knife open in the least you really you know it just gets started then you have to whip your wrist out and it doesn't make a good finger guard so uh, i have the trainer of this and i have hurt people with the flipper using the trainer uh you know the trainer has a has a dull blade but it still has a sharp and serrated flipper so i would highly recommend finding exactly where this where uh the uh, slot is for the stop pin and then shaving that sucker off because it's it's awful in actual use all right so that is the uh at least on your trainer uh, on your real knife yeah you want it to gouge wherever it can all right so next up is the inverse of the karambit and that is the elvia uh, or that is the the uh, the fruit knife this sort of uh downward facing pical style knife you have that same sickle styled uh blade right and then you have that same sort of very aggressive uh pical style grip you see someone with a knife in reverse grip and you can only imagine they mean business whether it's to fight or kill someone or to really horse the tip of that knife into something tough right you're 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 expecting business when you see that well this thing in hand especially with that edge facing backward and that hook facing backward backward this looks like the claw of a tiger or a velociraptor or of something you know menacing and natural people oftentimes equate the karambit to that to a tiger claw or something but tigers don't have claws that face this way and they don't use this motion to to hook and to and to snag and to cut and to slice they use this motion because that's how they're built and when you see a blade oriented in that uh direction and you see that sickle shaped 
sharp, gnarly blade. It's intimidating. Um, I, I, at this point, would actually venture to say that, to me, it's more intimidating than the Karambit. I see the Karambit, and I'm like, I'm either totally dead because this guy can use a Karambit, or um, you know, maybe I can run fast enough and get away from him. But this thing right here, this is like heaven, heaven help you if he gets close enough. Uh, all that being said, I know I know people with very little training have used karambits to great uh, effect. There is a whole video series on someone who is being, um, you know, taken to jail because they used one to, to defend themselves. So that was very interesting. All right. Moving along. Intimidating knives. What could be more intimidating? Well, I think I have some 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 things here, but what could be more intimidating than a double edged out the front serrated automatic knife? So you have the action of the automatic knife, first of all, which is intimidating. Um, if if you know, if you're in the know and you see that it's a double action, you know that you cannot be stabbed with this as it comes out. But if it's a single action, you can be because there's nothing stopping that thing from shooting all the way out. That's why you have to recharge it by hand by pulling that lever back. So a halo, uh, a halo, you could put that up to someone and plunge that blade into them. This knife, you could not. But still, that blade shooting out the front means business. We know that from the movies, you know? Anyone ever see Romancing the Stone from the 80s? That was the first time I got really into these uh, uh, out the fronts because the bad guy, I think he was a Colombian, corrupt Colombian general who was after, uh, who was after um, Michael Douglas was uh, always carrying a out the front knife. It was a cheap, cheap sort of European uh, out the front, but he still used it and it was still kind of creepy and scary and intimidating to see that blade shoot out the front, especially if you don't even know it's in the hand. You know, you see a hand and then suddenly it comes flying out. And then this, of course, is black. And we know that black knives mean business. And then it's also double edged. And I don't know how they do it uh, exactly, but Microtech has like on this a very steep grind from that center you know medial ridge here down to the edge it's a very steep grind and yet this thing is so incredibly keen and sharp i'm not exactly sure how that works this one has an m390 blade and serrations on top which are just absolutely wicked uh great thing about uh about this and the troodon and the um uh, the microtech tro troodon is that it's double if it's double edged and you turn it over, you have a really great grip here. Actually, I like the grip better when it's turned over. It's more ergonomic in that uh, this wonderful jimping that's ordinarily on the bottom of the handle is great for your thumb. And then back behind it a little bit, you have the um, the sliding um, actuating tab as your finger guard, forefinger guard. So it works well, like perfectly well in either grip. But yeah, intimidating, scary with the serrations, the black blade, the double edge, and then the action. <laughs> okay, so next up, you saw this a few minutes ago. Uh, this is the Hinderer XM24 Warncliffe. This, I don't know if other people get the same emotional response from this blade. I love the Hinderer Warncliffe. And like I say all the time, I believe their Warncliffe and their Bowie is most perfectly expressed in the four inch format all the lines have the length enough to express themselves fully and most gracefully to make the best <laughs> looking version of in this case the worn clip blade but this one to me is just a scary looking blade it is very useful very very uh utilitarian it's extremely sharp this is one of the uh 24s from before the uh before the tri uh the triway pivot it doesn't have that, but that blade to me, that blade is just, this is the, the perfect worn cliff. And for me, it's because it is very pointy. It has a very uh, intimidating and acute point uh, from this angle, of course. But when you look at it in cross section, you could still plunge this uh, acute tip into some very strong materials. It has uh, the full width of that blade. Uh, up to the tip, pretty much, and man, it's awesome. Uh, but something about the shape of this blade—it looks, it 
the straight edged blades to me look like all business. I could see where uh, someone looks at a at a curvy, curvy sort of um, blade, like say, let's just say this knife. You see that very curvy shaped blade and you think, oh, that's a weapon. That's a weapon for sure. Look at it. It looks optimized for it. It looks like a mini sword, but you see a straight edge like, oh, sorry. You see a straight edge like on this worn cliff here and it looks like a work knife, but it's a big work knife. And what is the work in this case? You're going to work on me with that knife. So something about that worn cliff, that utilitarian look of the worn cliff on a large blade, and we're going to see that again in this next one, is very, very intimidating to me. Uh, so, and this one has that battle gray finish on it. So it looks like it's uh, a weapon to me. Okay, next is another worn cliff, and we know that this was optimized for, for fighting. This is the Yojumbo by uh, Spyderco. The Yojumbo is the large version or the large big brother of the Yojimbo, a Warncliffe, a, a, a 3.25 inch Warncliffe designed by uh, Marshall Blade Concepts master and creator, Michael Janich, who's uh, you know, experienced in a lot of different cloak and dagger careers and uh, teaches people how to fight with knives and with guns. And uh, his design, his Warncliffe design, uh, is that straight edge is there to, you know, I was mentioning before how menacing it looks because it looks like a utility knife and, and, uh, a work knife. And what are you about to go to work on? Is it me? Um, but that's the psychological thing, the straight edge, uh, physically he likes that because in a slash, you do not have a trailing point, uh, glancing away from the target as it swipes by, for instance, with this knife, with that extreme belly, as it's as you're slashing and your arm is arcing, I want to be careful not to cut myself. Uh, that blade, as it trails up, is glancing away from the medium. In this case, my hand. If you have a straight edge as you go by, that tip is just continuing to dig in. So that's why that's why the use of the worn cliff uh, for some martial bladed experts uh, is is so. Um, I don't want to say necessary, but optimal. Uh, this blade, of course, has the added intimidation of the hollow grind. So, A, it's super sharp and thin behind the edge, but the person looking at that isn't thinking, oh, that's a thin behind the edge. They see the, they, they see the hollow grind. They see the way the light plays on the hollow grind, and they immediately think of a straight razor. And they know that a straight razor is very sharp. You know, they see that line there dancing across the hollow grind and then they see that tip and they see the four inches and they're like oh gonna change my area code people so so these two knives to me are are, are these worn cliffs are very intimidating they have the size they have that point you know not all worn cliffs are equal and these two have these extreme points that are just terrifying and then uh and then they have their own characteristics this dull gray battle finish it looks like it's all business. And this uh, shiny hollow ground blade looks like a straight razor. Okay, next up is the beautiful Fox made, a lot of Fox on this show, uh, Fox Knives made MK Ultra, designed by Jason Knight. You can see that in the blade. That is a Jason Knight blade. That is a Jason Knight Fuller, 100%. And this handle is all, I mean, this whole thing is Jason Knight. He's an incredible uh, forger of blades. He was a forged in fire uh, substitute um, judge for a while. A very, very cool guy. He's been on this show before. Um, his uh, metier, if you will, is the Kukri, his modernized Kukri. And he uh, had this licensed by, he had this uh, produced by Fox Knives. And, and at the time it was, uh, put out by tactical elements now they're further and wider uh, available but look at this thing i mean in hand it is a kukri it is the most um the most kukri like folding kukri i know of i have a couple and to me this one is definitely the most like a real kukri and that curve is is just terrifying you look at that and it's 
it's chopping before your hand even gets there. And uh, I think people know that intuitively. You see this, it reminds you of a sickle. It reminds you of, it, in its downward curve, that is. So it, it's evocative of a lot of scary things. But that that S-curved, recurved blade is the menace. You see that, you know it's all business. Plus, it's black, and it's odd. If you If you, all of these knives, that's one characteristic all of these knives share is part of the intimidation factor is that they're odd. They are not your usual looking drop point blades or Bowie blades that people are used to. And you see this and you're like, oh shoot, man, I see an edge gleaming on that, but why is it shaped like that? What is this, what is this about to do to me? So real intimidation factor uh, with that folding kukri. Another one that has the recurve and the, the same sort of menace factor is this, uh, CQC 15. This is a super 15, which means it's bigger. <laughs> and uh, so this is the, uh, this has the intimidation factor of a recurve and of a tanto. So you got that, that, that was how Ernest Emerson designed this knife. He took his commander, which is recurve based and his uh, number seven, which is also, which is a tanto, put them together but in doing so, created something that to me looks like a great white shark. To me, I see this thing and it just, it looks like a white shark and it looks like it's ready to come just devour you. And um, maybe people who are not knife uh, enthusiasts don't recognize the Tanto tip for its penetration particularly and don't recognize the recurve for its unbelievable slicing uh, and slashing ability. They might not know that in particular, but they will look at this and understand intuitively. And that's why, to me, this is one of the more one of the most intimidating um, Emerson blades is that he's taking two very intimidating blades that are very different. You know, one is sinuous and one is straight and angular and faceted, and he's putting them together. And together they make a, a, a scary brew of of blade there. Okay, this one is probably the most obviously intimidating. This is low-hanging fruit, uh, but but it is no joke. This this for years, not this year, funny enough, but for years this was my uh, breast pocket knife for my winter jacket because if you needed to cut something through a... If, if you had to fight someone, okay, and they were wearing a thick, heavy leather jacket, you would you would be in trouble unless you had something like this. And that is the cold steel black talon. Yes, that is a full four inch. Uh, yeah, full four inch blade. That's XHP steel. And you have that incredible, incredible S curve with the downward hook at the tip and the very awesome cold steel serrations. Um, yes, everything is aesthetic with me. And I don't think that cold steel makes the best looking serration pattern, but I think they make an incredibly effective one because it's five small teeth punctuated by one large scoop sharpened scoop let me see if i can get some focus probably not it's pretty close but yeah there you go five sharp teeth punctuated by one deep sharpened scoop so each one of those five little sharpened peaks in the middle are like saw blades or like little saw teeth and then you have the bigger scoops which do heavier work but the point is those little teeth that's five little teeth in between that's five five teeth you have to dull before this will will not cut and and then those large scoops so serrated blades are great i know i know they get a lot of people don't like them they're hard to sharpen and they're they don't look as good and and but they will cut for much longer than a regular edged blade just because of the, their very nature. They have a whole bunch of little, little tiny blades facing down. And each one of those tiny blades is sharp at the tip and sharp on the edge. And so it's going to take naturally much longer for, you know, a hundred little blades on your edge to dull. And then you look at the shape of this thing. We're talking about intimidation. We see the teeth, of course, that's terrifying, but look at that shape. What the hell is that for? Other than it looks like a gut hook. What is that for? Other than, you know, doing grievous bodily harm. So you look at this thing and you think, okay, that's, 
I'm going to get out of this situation, whatever that is. Or you think I'm going to draw my gun because, you know, because that's, that's your, that's your best recourse against something like this. I mean, plus this thing waves out of your pocket with this thumb plate. It's ridiculous. I mean, this thing is, well, you know, it's a cold steel. It's one of the most purpose-driven cold steels out there. And it borrows that blade shape from the uh, Spyderco civilian, which is which was originally um, commissioned by the South African government uh, in the early 90s. They were experiencing a lot of rapes in their um, cities, and they, the government of South Africa commissioned Spyderco to make a knife that someone with zero training could use to great effect uh, to get someone off of them. So they came up with that sinuous S-curve blade. Now, on the civilian uh, that tip is much thinner, and you would not want to use that as a utility knife for fear of that tip coming off. Not so with the cold steel, obviously. Uh, so they have the same thing, much more robust tip, but that edge profile, that S-shaped edge profile with the downward hooking tip from Spyderco, and very, very effective. Okay, second to last here is a, this one is intimidating on a number of factors also. This is the Bastinelli knives, big drago tack. It looks like a giant sax. You know, it's 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 an intimidating blade shape again in that it's like a large triangle, and we know what you can do with a large triangle with a with a large pointy thing. But again, it is an inch and a half wide. It is fully flat ground. It does. It is a somewhat robust uh, blade thickness. Uh, uh, what is it? Uh, I don't remember, but it's under. <laughs> It's well, it's a somewhat robust blade thickness. I, I apologize. I'm speaking out of school and I don't want to try and estimate here. Uh, and I'm not going to about an eighth of an inch thick, maybe a little thicker comes down full flat ground. It's very sharp, even though it's a big, thick blade. And it's but it, it's that broadness and the full flat grind gets it very sharp. But that handle, the handle uh, allows for different grips. You can grip all the way down here. Suddenly you have a, a standoff range of about seven inches. Uh, if you grip down here, uh, this is a four and a half inch blade, uh, but you can get much more out of it if you come way down the handle. Again, you're going to lose uh, some, of, some of your sureness of hand if you're way back here, uh, but it gives you a lot of options. And uh, you pull this thing out. It's so broad, so big, and simple looking. It's like a big sharpened triangle uh, that it just seems like it's all business. All right, last up. Now, this one, this one's probably the most intimidating to me because, well, I wouldn't want to face any of these, uh, certainly. And 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 at this point, we're we're really shaving shaving hairs here. But this one to me is the most intimidating. This is the cold steel. XL Vaquero Voyager. And in this case, it's the signature, Lynn Thompson signature edition. I, I love Lynn Thompson, uh, you know, master with a knife, all these different, uh, you know, he's a master of a number of different bladed arts. And uh, I think he does JKD and he designs all these incredible, nasty weapons. And look at his signature. <laughs> I love it. His signature is, it's a school marms signature. I, and to me, uh, I am not making fun of him or dissing him at all. To me, this is the kind of surprise I like. I like when people surprise me. And I like to see that Lynn Thompson's cursive is on point and that his signature is 100% legible. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Uh, but there it is on the side of this five and a half inch XHP. Yeah, XHP uh, recurve blade. Now, they just put out a video, uh, Cold Steel did, about this blade and this knife in particular or or i should say the the large voyager vaquero in particular talking about why it is lynn thompson's all-time favorite knife he carries three of these look at how big this is he carries three of these on him at a time like every day all the time and he said he sleeps with one you know next to the bed i'm fine with it but you're keeping it in the bed that's that's taking it too far but it was interesting i always thought that this was based on the um on the Navaja, this sort of Spanish-looking knife, but it's not. This is based on the Yatagan, a uh, a, a classic uh, sword 
from where is it from India from the Indian subcontinent that is a uh, a curve that has uh, uh, I'm sorry it is a short sword that like this has a downward curve but it comes back up to place the the point center line so you can use this and have point surety if you will like a dagger you know that the point is going right down center line sorry jim going right down center line here and not not like an upswept knife the point is not headed in that opposite direction uh, or away from you upswept it is going exactly it's exactly aligned with the pivot and the um lanyard hole so you have the benefit of a severe recurve here but also the benefit of having the point uh, right down center line, as opposed to a kukri where you have that severe recurve, but the point is pointing down. You can still thrust with a re with a kukri for sure, uh, but some things like a like an angle like this, where you're coming uh, over top like this or around like this, you have to you would with a kukri you would have to adjust for that point, whereas some sort of off angle like this or like this, you already have the point headed right where it needs to go with this. So to me, this is the most intimidating of these. Um, uh, of course, you have the contrast of the black blade with the silver teeth, uh, but that curve and then just knowing what it can do is uh, menacing and terrifying. And this one, I have a, um, uh, a, a snaggletooth MF on it so that I can draw this and wave it out of my pocket. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So these are the most intimidating folders in my collection by design, not by sheer size. Uh, so I'm talking about, uh, like I said, blade design and first impression when it comes out. So I'm going to run through them. It's the Karambit, in this case, the Fox 599. It's the Pical style knife, in this case, the Spider Co or the uh, Emerson Elvia. You got the Ultratech double edge. Uh, you have the uh, MX8, uh, MX24 in Warncliffe. We have the Yojumbo. We have the MK Ultra. We have the Super CQC15, the Black Talon 2 from Cold Steel, the Big Drag Attack by Bastinelli. And then I would say my most intimidating, most terrifying blade would have to be the Serrated Voyager XL. All right, well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening and checking out that uh, that rundown of things. To me, uh, that's part of what is compelling about a knife design. It's not just the function. It's not just the utility. It is definitely what it taps in my imagination. And these knives tap a lot. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Check us out uh, this weekend, Sunday. I have Alex Steingraber back on the show. Alex, such an awesome guy. And really, to me, he's he's one of these one of these searching minds trying to find the best heat treat, trying to trying to grind the best and uh, get the thinnest, thinnest knives out there. Uh, he has an incredible looking folder that he's working on. So that's why I had him back on. We talk all about that. Check that out. And then, of course, uh, the next supplemental and then Thursday night knives tomorrow night, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you can't finish this show on YouTube or just don't like the look of my face, you can download it right here on all the podcast apps, Apple, Google, iHeart, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, and a whole host of others. So for Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, my name is Bob DeMarco. I go by the Knife Junkie. And until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, thenifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at thenifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on thenifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at thenifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at thenifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear Hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast.